Today we are going to be learning how to play stair steps from the book Americana Strings, page 21. In this song, we will be reviewing G on the D string. We are going to introduce how to play pinky A on the D string on the fourth tape. Uh, cellos will be learning how to shift into second position. And then we are also learning, uh, reviewing half notes, half rests, bow lift, da capo al fine, and what augmentation and diminution is. So I want everyone to turn to page 21, stair steps. We're just gonna do the first two lines for right now. We learned already that pressing three fingers down on the D string makes another G. Now, the, the first G that we learned was open G. Everybody remembers that? Yes. We played that on four string fun. Yes. All right, and then we learned three fingers. You push one finger on the first tape, second finger on the second tape, third finger on the third tape, and that is G. That's another G. All right, now cello players, you're using four fingers on the D string G. All right, someone tell me, what's the difference that they hear with this G and this G? What's the difference? Yes. Uh, the open G is a deeper. Is, is a lower sound, right? Yeah. So, and guys, uh, so I want us to look at this board right over here because this shows us low G down here. Everybody look up here, low G. And there's higher G. Now, the musical distance between low G and higher G is called an octave. Now, octave has O-C-T in it. O-C-T means eight. Now, uh, and are there other words that you know that has O-C-T in it? Anybody? Okay, we gotta raise your hand, please. Yes. Octagon. So if you come to a stop sign, guess what? The octagon has eight sides, right? What uh, what other word that you know has oct in it? Yes. Octopus has eight tentacles. Very good. So now in music, an octave is, look up here, the musical distance of eight notes apart from each other. So I'm going to play all these and count with me while I play. Ready? Listen. Here's, I'm gonna go from low G to higher G. Ready, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, stop. So, there is eight notes from that. That's why this is called an octave. From low G to higher G is called an octave. Now, what I just played was a scale. When you go, from low G to high G or low D to high D, and you go up by small steps, that's called a scale. And we will be learning the scale, uh, the D scale very soon, actually. Okay? Now, let's look at measures one through seven in your books. All right? And I want all of us to say the letter names. Point to them and say them. One, Two, one through seven, measures one through seven. Ready, just say them. Ready, go. G, 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 F sharp, F sharp, F sharp, F sharp. E, 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 D, 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 D. E, 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 E. F sharp, F sharp, F sharp, F sharp. G, 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 stop. Okay, so we're going to just play that much Let's all practice playing that much. Notice that measure eight has a four above it. You see that? So there's a four on, on one note, but the other one also has a four, okay? So there's two fours in a row. Uh, I refer to this as pinky A on the D string. Okay, let's read. Why is it necessary for all of us to learn how to play pinky A? Why, why don't we just use open A? So here's why. Staying on one string will help you play faster note passages more efficiently. So I'm gonna demonstrate uh, the second year 
Uh, we'll be playing the harmony part, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, at our next concert. You're going to be playing the melody, and they're going to be playing the harmony. And this is what they're going to be doing while you're while you're playing the melody. They're going to be playing this. They're going to be playing that that fast passage of eighth notes, and they're going to be using pinky A's because if they don't. They, they, they have to cross strings and it kind of slows them down. Listen if I play it with open A. Listen how it sounds different if I play it with open A. I'm crossing strings and it slows me down. But if I stay on one string, listen. I can play faster and it's smoother. And I don't have to cross strings. So let's try playing pinky A. Now, cellos, you have to slide your first finger on top of the second tape and then just put pinky on that fourth tape. So, and then the, uh, okay, now the uh, violas and violins, uh, you'll notice that uh, some of you might say, Mr. L, it's too hard for me to stretch. So you don't have to hold all four, four fingers down. You could actually lift up the three and just stretch your pinky. So I want to come around and I want to hear everybody play pinky A's. All right. The song Stair Steps in the book Americana Strings is a great song is a is a great song for teaching pinky a on the d string it is also a great song for teaching cello players how to shift into second position you will notice that all the beginning songs in americana strings has a, an answer key at the bottom the answer key provides all the notes needed in order to play the song so when you're going through the song and you come across a note you don't know don't write the letter above it. Look at the answer key. And the process of association will help in the memorizing process, will help you become better readers. Now, not only does the answer key provide the notes that you need to know in order to play the song, the answer key also provides a great tool for an exercise. For example, we want to play the answer key frontwards and backwards at least three times. We're gonna start slow. The first note is D, second note is E, F sharp, G, and then pinky A. Then go backwards, G, F sharp, E, D, and now pick up the tempo. key frontwards and backwards will give you confidence in playing on the D string pinky A and it will also help with the cellos gaining confidence shifting into second position. Um, normally cello players beginning cello players will play open D one finger on the first tape E three fingers on the second tape, F sharp, four fingers on the third tape, G. And then we normally play open A. Now, the song Stair Steps, page 21 from the book Americana Strings, is a pivotal song in helping the cello students shift into second position. So what I have my students do first is write the letter below each note. And um, so now we are going to play open D, one finger E, that's normal, but instead of playing three finger F sharp, the minus one indicates first finger sliding, the Roman numeral two indicates second tape. So we are going to be sliding our first finger 
onto the second tape. Now, when you do slide your first finger, the thumb and the first finger slide together as a unit. So the thumb has, uh, will be sliding behind the neck with the first finger. So um, instead of playing F sharp with three fingers, we are now playing F sharp with one finger. And instead of playing G with four fingers, now we are just putting our second finger down and we're playing G with two fingers. Instead of playing open A, we are actually in second position. We're just going to put our pinky on top of that fourth tape. So now here is the exercise at the very bottom. I have my students play frontwards, backwards, at least three times, getting used to sliding their first finger into second position like this. <laughs> That prepares the students for the shifting process that is required in the song Stair Steps. Okay, now, uh, everybody knows what a composer does. What does a composer do? Yes? They make music. They write the, they draw the ovals on the staff so that you could play their music. Now, on page 35, we are actually, don't turn it to it yet, but on page 35, we're actually gonna do what a composer does. We're gonna get used to drawing ovals on the staff. And, uh, but right now, I would like to talk a little bit about what composers do to make their music interesting. For example, they will make a melody, and this in this melody here, we have a lot of short sounds that only lasts for one beat. What kind of notes are kind of short sounds that only last for one beat? Quarter. quarter notes, very good. So these are all quarter notes, right? So this melody is written in quarter notes, but composers sometimes will like to change their music so it's not all the same. So what they'll do is they'll increase the value, they'll combine these two quarter notes into one half note. They increase the values. So these two Gs, quarter note Gs, will become one half note G. These two quarter note Gs will become this half note G. These two quarter note F sharps will become this half note F sharp. See that? So it's, now this is called augmentation. All right, so everyone say augmentation. Augmentation. What does augmentation mean? Increases the value of the notes. So everybody keep the beat in your feet. Say the letters while you keep the beat. Two, ready, go. G, G, F sharp, F sharp, E, E. Say the D, D, E, E. F sharp, F sharp, G. G and A bow lift. Then this is a half rest in your music. That's a bow lift. Now we're going to go back to the beginning because why? Da capo means what? Da capo means the yes, the head. And then we're going to keep playing till we come to the word fine, which is the end. The fine is a double bar right there. So what is happening with the composer? The composer augmented the melody, increased the value, and now guess what the composer is going to do? He's, he or she is going to divide the value of the notes in, in half. So the half note G now becomes two quarter note Gs again. The half note F sharps become two uh, quarter note F sharps. So we go back to the beginning and we're going to be uh, what composers call, they're going to use the technique of diminution. Everyone say diminution. Diminution. Diminution, read. Decreases the value of the notes. So when you, I, I want all of us to try to be composers. So uh, I want you to try not only to play music, but also to write music. 
This is a technique that you can use. Once you create a melody, you can now uh, change that melody by increasing the value of the notes, augmentation, and then go back and decrease the value of the notes, diminution.